But let's go and find out what um, the father of the late Major Maxwell Mahama has been saying because he did express disappointment that Ghanaians have not learned any lessons from the tragic death of his son. He made this observation two years after the late soldier was allegedly mistaken for an armed robber and murdered while on duty at Dentro Boise in the central region. Thomas Adote Papo has been speaking to him and he first began by asking how he survived two years without his confidant and his son. Hmm. Well, uh, I can say so far, uh, life has been a sad one. It's not even been uh, the best. Just because uh, his memory still lives with us so vividly that uh, it gives us a lot of pain to uh, get to come to the realization that he's no more with us. Time heals, yes, but uh, time maybe is not yet enough for us to get healed. We pray that uh, time will actually heal, heal us. Captain, tell us, it's been two solid years your son left you. Your son you described as your confidant and an affable person. How have you managed? Yes, uh, Maxwell is the type of person who was very jovial. Anywhere he finds himself, he gets a, a group of people coming around him just because he likes uh, to crack jokes. He likes to uh, display like dancing and making his uh, acrobatics displays and this and just to entertain people. He likes entertaining his people, whether you are two, three or four. He will take the stage, the front stage, to entertain you. Even when he died, a group of policemen who came for the funeral at the state house they came and greeted me and told me that they knew him very well because of the Operation Calm Life that they used to embark upon. And my son, Maxwell, used to be the detachment military commander uh, attached to the police. So these policemen were saying that he always chastised them for molesting or harassing any civilian arrested. Even when they arrested armed robbers, he wouldn't allow any policeman or soldier to, to touch or hit any suspect. He would be angry with you. And he said that this is the officer who used to be so angry with us and always insisted that we shouldn't uh, torture any suspect that we arrested. And how come this thing happened to him? That goes a long way to prove what I know about him in his uh, affable nature, peaceful nature, and his uh, cordial nature. Yes, uh, Captain, your last competition with your son was about uh, the construction of his house. Now it's the last phone you had with him before he was gruesomely murdered. How does seeing over the house remind you of him? I was in the north when he called me. No, he asked me a question. Uh, Daddy, do you know Denjo? Uh, do you know Diaso? Then I then described the whole place to him. And he said, OK, Daddy, that's where I am. I said, what? For what? So until you know, the government just announced that uh, they, were, they were banning uh, Galamse operations. So we, as I heard about it, and it was even launched. He said, yes, he's been asked to go and relieve the officer on the operations because the officer has to write promotion exams. At that their level, he's the only one who uh, didn't have uh, promotion exams to write because he's already cleared all the all the subjects and I said gave him my advice and lectured him well on security of the place and then the nature of such activity but that they try and come early because I want to finish the the house that we started and that's all that ended it up to today I haven't heard of my from my son again very painful. Oh, yes. Not to have heard from him again. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 Yes.
stopped crying because it, it just it just keeps happening or his memories a lot of discussions we've had a lot of plans we've put together you know he set up his, his company his idea was that uh, uh, September 2017 September 6 he will be a major but he's already passed his promotion exams as soon as he's a major he will leave the service he wants to go into academia this was his idea that he'll go into academia captain I know this is a very difficult question to answer but I want to find out from you have you been able to forgive the perpetrators of this gruesome murder on your son have you forgiven them not amidst my tears I will forgive them when my tears are gone but I keep on saying who am I for them to be asking for forgiveness from can I create a human being I didn't create Maxwell I didn't create him they should go to whoever wants forgiveness should go to his creator the one who created Maxwell they should go to him and ask for forgiveness not me and even if me if I would go off my way and give forgiveness not amidst my tears his mother is in tears she cannot even contain herself the wife is in tears she cannot contain herself I myself I'm a man I'm broken down and I am yet to pick my pieces together I miss this how do I talk about forgiveness I understand there is a video about it even I haven't seen it but it still worries me it still hurts me to just imagine how things went I think if I were to see it if I even happen to see it I don't know how things will go with me will you ever master the courage to see that never 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 I pray I should never see it because I will die if I should see that video I will die even if I don't see it but what is happening to me only God knows they say the wheels of justice grind slowly and indeed justice delayed is justice denied what is your assessment of the ongoing trial where 14 persons are before court for the murder of Major Maxwell Mahama we are talking about uh, law rule of law which uh, every normal human being and all of us support strongly and so the wheels of justice will grind slowly but like they say will surely catch up with the criminal or the offender and so we are okay with the justice system all right currently going on our only unfortunate uh, uh, thing that is worrying us is that the number of people involved right currently there are 14 people standing trial and i personally feel sad about it because the stories i have heard and the whole danger of Boise mob came out normally over hundreds and i know from basic law that an accomplice to a crime is equally uh, as guilty as the perpetrator of the crime so those who stood there and prevented him from running away those who stood there and then cheering others to uh, go after him those who went out to go and call more people to come out and not to talk about those who stood there with sticks not to talk about those who took guns and were shooting at him the CID told us that he had five direct gunshots into his body his body received five gunshots and they even arrested some with guns his iPhone was found with somebody his boots and other things were found with other people other people were involved in going to fetch kerosene or petrol and others were involved in others were on their body this is what we are told in court they were on their body lighting fire and all those things where are they we have only 14 people standing that is the only sudden certain but we are happy because the CID has told us that that is not the end of their pursuance of the perpetrators they are still 
on their heels. And it could take 20, 30 years, they are still looking for them. And that is what we are crying for. They should look for them. I would be very glad to see at least 150 people well identified as those who contributed and took part in the killing of this innocent soul. Now, some people said that your son was engaged in Galamse. The armed forces came out and uh, stated categorically that he was sent on anti-Galamse operations. So he went there on relieving duties. How can he be engaged in Galamse? That one has since been debunked very, very well. The armed forces command has come out categorically to explain how they sent him on a, a national assignment. How can he be? He has never been there before. He doesn't know there. He doesn't know anybody there. How can he be engaged in Galamse? With who? <laughs> it's not possible. Do you think that Ghanaians have learned any lessons from the murder of Major Maxwell Mahama? Unfortunately, we haven't learned anything. Neither has it even pricked our senses. Why am I saying so? What happened to Major Maxwell Mahama is still being perpetrated. It's still happening. Innocent lives are still being claimed by mob action. Mob action. So how much have we learned the lesson? Shall we sit down and continue experiencing these innocent lives being claimed by mob action? Uh, the incident of Major Maxwell Mama has not sent any good signal. Or the signal has not been drummed home well into Ghanaians to avoid this mob action on innocent or even suspected criminals. I keep on saying that. Supposing Major Maxwell Mama were even an armed robber. Supposing he were even one of those who uh, had uh, uh, who was in the team that uh, came to Dencho Obuasi that Friday to perpetrate that uh, armed robbery. Was that the best action to take against him? Why wouldn't you sub hand him over to the police so that he could assist to identify all the other people who took part? Now, when the incident occurred, uh, you promised that you're going to set up a foundation against mob injustice. I see you're wearing a t-shirt against mob injustice. How far have you gone with this foundation? We have formed the, the Major Maxwell Mahama Memorial Foundation. Uh, his wife Barbara got it registered at the Registrar General Department. And uh, we have so far had a lot of volunteers. Because what we are saying is that this Major Maxwell Mahama Memorial Foundation the sole purpose is to campaign against mob justice. What we are saying is that the mob justice that claimed Maxwell's life should be the end of it all. We should all take a cue from this horrific, barbaric, Denchobasi mob action to say never again. Captain Mahama, thank you very much. Thank you, too. Thank you. Most grateful. Most grateful. Thank you.